Tomorrow night marks a painful anniversary for many who survived the Nazi Holocaust. The anniversary of Kristallnacht. It also provides an opportunity to remember the bravery of the righteous. Jim Axelrod has the story of two remarkable people. Joanna Newman is on a journey more than 70 years in the making. A journey that started in Germany. How old were you when you left Hamburg? Eight. I had just had my eighth birthday. What do you remember of, of the leaving of Hamburg? Very much because this was such a dramatic experience. Her life changed in the violent darkness of November 9th, 1938. During Kristallnacht, the night of broken glass, the Nazis launched a vicious assault on Jewish communities, looting homes, destroying businesses, burning synagogues. It was an ominous preview of the horrors to come. Her father feared where his country was headed, so he began making preparations to flee. Young Joanna tagged along with him on a devastating errand in the basement of their apartment building. He had all of the, this correspondence and photography, uh, uh, photographs and, and so on, of his youth and of his uh, life, and, and he had made arrangements with the um, superintendent of the house uh, that he could burn the things in the furnace. And, you know, like every piece that he burned was like a, a piece of his life. A few months later, little Joanna and her parents were gone, leaving Germany for good. But on this day, Joanna's journey home won't take her back to Germany. Instead, she's returning to an unlikely safe haven and a reunion with her improbable family. <laughs> a deep pilku is anxiously waiting to greet the woman he hasn't seen in more than 60 years. <laughs> You could say a deep is Johanna's cousin. At least that's what they told the Nazis. That was the cover story? That was the cover story. That you were... We're Germans from Germany, uh, and uh, we were her family. There are a number of extraordinary examples of people who risked and sometimes lost their lives hiding Jews from the Nazis during World War II. But chances are you've never heard of one like this, because the Pilkus were in Albania, a 70% Muslim country in southeastern Europe. The gem of this story is that Albania took in refugee Jews. And Deborah Dwork has written a book about Jewish refugees during World War II. Europe, 1938, 39, 40, even 41, we see it as a totally closed universe. And Jews were looking for holes, for openings. People began to whisper, I hear if you get to Albania, you will be safe. Safe because of a cornerstone of Albanian culture known as Bessa, the promise to treat strangers as if they were family and guard them with their lives. It has to do with a certain sense of honor, an honor code that they take very seriously. So it's not simply to give someone something, a, a bed for a night, a hot meal. It is really to offer protection. Like their neighbors, the Pilkus adhered closely to Bessa and to their Muslim beliefs that also emphasize the protection of others. The role of Albanian culture and traditions and the religious influence of Islam came together. Adip's mother was of German heritage. She married an Albanian embracing both Bessa and Islam, especially after the Nazis occupied Albania. Adip proudly tells the story of his mother affecting a thick German accent to throw off the Nazis 
growing suspicious of Joanna and her family. Not once, but twice. Nana u revoltua dite shumë, u bo nervos si e tha, erdhët një herë, tha, po të, po të dytë një herë, e berit nuk i njofun. Pra një, o shëko që të vini më këtu, se dhe që këta në kohëmë. O shëtër të vini këtu, tha. E nderu në higën. Through all this, remember, Joanna and her parents were hiding in plain sight. And here you are now coming in contact with German soldiers. I certainly was uh, doing their occupation very much afraid that I wouldn't live the next day. According to the International School for Holocaust Studies, over the course of the occupation, the Albanians did not turn over a single Jew to the Nazis. At the end of the war, there were more Jews living in Albania than before. It's an extraordinary record. So how is it that so few people know about it? Nearly no one knows about this story. Why is it not known? Because of the shutters that went down on Albania so soon after 1945 and the draconian communist regime in that for the next half century. And by the time the shutters lifted, what happened half a century ago was not so urgent as people's everyday needs right then and there. I had to find out what these people did and why they did it. As seen in the upcoming documentary, God's House, photographer Norman Gershman traveled to Albania to document surviving members of families that saved Jews during the Holocaust. Among them, a deep pilku. What is he holding here? Is the plaque. Uh, that, uh, that honored his mother and father as righteous among nations, where uh, Joanna and her family gave testimony that, yes, this family saved our lives. The Allies whisked 14-year-old Joanna and her parents out of Albania in September of 1945. Oh, hey, shum, shum Joanna says her own parents always wanted to make up for the way they parted with the Pilkus. We were told that we cannot even go and say goodbye because there was danger that we might get arrested. It was much to my parents, uh, really regret, terrible regret. No chance to say thank you. No chance to say thank you. Wow. My goodness. <laughs> Yuta. Yuta. <laughs> Finally. Decades later, she had her chance. This was Johanna's journey. 62 years. When you saw him again, can you describe that reunion? Well, in a way, it was a little bit strange because I left a little boy and here was an old man. <laughs> it was very emotional. There's no question about it. After the war, Joanna's family settled safely in the United States, but in newly communist Albania, a very different fate awaited the Pilkus. They quickly went from being the protectors to the oppressed, and their life together as a family ended in tragedy when a deep Pilku's father was arrested and executed by the communist regime. He was such a good human being. He was shot for what? Joanna Newman has spent years trying to honor the family that saved hers. Her deepest satisfaction came only recently in a conversation with a deep Pilku's daughter. I got my reward. She said, I am so proud to know what my grandparents did. Mm. And that was really my main purpose. Because he was uh, uh, executed by the communists, so what, kind, what do the grandchildren think of their grandparents? One look at a deep Pilku's face tells the whole story. I see a, a very modest son and very proud of his family and saving people who are desperate. These people were courageous, they were righteous, and they were just wonderful people. Reagan Lewis Antiques. Quality is what we sell.
Come see.